For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Sending you guys a bit of a review video on a brand new product from Dometic. So this is the Dometic Club Driveway 261, or as it might also possibly be known as the DTK 261. So what kind of we've got here is basically a driveway awning in Dometic's range um, that's designed for small little camper vans. So it's quite, it's almost like a, a merge of kind of a, a caravan awning, but with the flexibility of a driveway. So it feels like a fix, but has, like I said, the ability you can detach it, leave your van, well, leave the, the, your sort of storage space or your living area, wherever you want to use it as, drive off, come back again, and you haven't got to pack everything back in the van. So it's quite nice. And it's definitely more kind of living orientated rather than what you see on the other things in the market. They're definitely more sleeping. So one model kind of almost that predates this is the Rally to Rally Drive Away 260. Now they've made a sort of a VW version of that, but what we kind of found is that the problem with that in many ways was that the main body height was so high. You know, you were looking at the being right up here, probably actually further than I could touch, and it's sloping down. And it didn't really fit in with kind of the small transit kind of VW kind of style. And that's where this, I think the club works really nicely that you haven't got suddenly a massive differentiation. So you haven't got a massive big awning down to a small camper van. And that was one of its big bugbears. Going forward, basically the club for the 2021 season comes in just one single size from 180 to 225. Like I said, it's more kind of taken out of a, a club design. So you've got its single inflation points, uh, which is located on the far side over here. So a single inflation point is located here, but then there's a deflation point at the bottom of every single beam. You've got flexibility that your little brow canopy, which is completely inflatable as well. Uh, and you can see from our own at walls pitching and packing video, it took me no longer than 10 minutes to pitch it all in one, uh, pegged out, got out of the works. The little canopy it does also benefit, it gives you a little bit of rain shelter against the front door. It also means that all the panels are very sort of flat and upright, meaning it's great for interior height. Additional storm straps can be purchased sort of to bring a front up there. And again, just kind of gives a bit more of additional bracing. It uses kind of Dometic's Pro Fabric. So it's a really nice sort of 300D fabric and the sort of feel and touch of it is quite nice uh, and more, doesn't feel as synthetic as you necessarily would, even though it is essentially a polyester. The joys in many ways of this is quite versatile in the sense that you can have it almost like an enclosed, but if you want to almost have it like a gazebo in many ways that the side panels and even the front panel can be completely removed and even a back panel into the connection section could be completely removed as well. So in many ways, it feels like a gazebo. But say for the wind, like it is today, if you want to, you can just put a panel on, panel on here, um, or like I said, have it op completely open. By the fact of being able to remove all the panels, what you find is that actually you can reduce the minimum weight down. So you can almost take it in kind of two separate bags rather than having one bag itself. And again, because there's a lot of awning here, the pack size does make it a little bit bigger. But that's where the versatility of removing the front and the side panels and the middle panel, along with the pump, the pegs, uh, even a ladder, so you really want to get that, that lightweight down to it. It means you can have two, two separate, more convenient size and lighter weight packs, packs, store it wherever you need to go. So again, that works really nicely. You've still got sort of very premium features, things like you sort of crystal clear windows, um, and then you also got mesh doors located on either side. Also what you find is the, the far door over there, also, uh, sorry, far window I should say, also has a mesh window in there as well, so it really helps circulation. You've got this really nice, neat draft system here to allow airflow again to happen in there and sort of help fight condensation, which is definitely one of the big bears that you do get with kind of camper and Dometic awnings. You've got a single pegging point system where one pegging point will actually peg the base out as well as all, you know, the guide points around that area. So that works really nicely. And again, the storm straps, as you said, we said earlier, are reinforced just to give a bit more bracing away from your van as well. Other things to bear in mind is things like the uh, Side panels can be interchanged, so you can reposition the door rather than being at the back, you position it at the front. And other things like you've got an entrance door in the tunnel section, so you haven't got to go through the awning every single time you want to go to. So you can quite happily open that up. Get my fingers all the right places. If need be, in many ways, kind of roll that back. 
and arguably leave it open the whole time if you don't want to, you know, just use it almost like a corridor. And that's kind of what this whole section is. It's not designed to be kind of completely weather tight. You always get a bit of draft and that not coming in. A bit of a disclaimer to be fair, the model I've got here is actually a model that doesn't exist. And um, so it's actually the version that they were going to introduce above the 225 mark. Um, so it doesn't actually, it's not actually in the range, but I still think that the way I've sort of pitched it here, you still really quite nicely. It's sort of nice and tight to the van and you can sort of come in and out as you please as well. But let's have a look on the inside and talk for a few more features that the club slash DTK has to offer. So kind of from front angle, you can appreciate kind of this real nice big open panel door here. So the door can be zipped sort of from right to left or left to right, and you can have it almost fully open as we talked about by removing it completely. Now it gives you lots of flexibilities that you also you can alter the, your doorway, and that kind of makes a bit more sense when you look a bit further back and you're thinking if you've got say a continental van where the, you know, your, the driver's side door or California, for example, where the sliding door is there, it means that you can alter the way the door slides so it flows through nicely. So for a conventional van, we can roll this back here and it will mirror the back door, obviously on the other side with the model. The other thing because of this as well is you can also do things like uh, create a little veranda. So for example, you've got four zip pullers in total and you can just kind of drop that down like so, flex that over. It means you've got an airflow coming in. Obviously you've got a rain safe canopy door at the front so you haven't got to worry about necessarily the rain coming driving in, but you can get an airflow in and you've got this secondary uh, mesh which panel which is an optional extra you can buy to go into it and it's located on a second zip so it means you can have both panels in at the same time. Like I said what you can also do as we talked about you can kind of move the door from one side to another if you really wanted to so by using the other zip pullers we can unzip that unpeg that and then roll that back and we've got some ties here. So again, taking that door back to kind of their sort of scenario. So again, leaving the mesh door fully in. What I'm going to do is actually sort of open up just to kind of give you a bit more of an idea for the whole kind of size of it. Let's try not to use three zip pullers at once. So you can either completely like disconnect that if you want to. For the time being, I'm just kind of going to roll it away, just to make it a bit, a little bit of a neater. And again, that's the secondary mesh panel that you can buy that go in there as well. And um, what we'll do again is just kind of completely take that out. We'll just take that out completely. And kind of leave it bunged up in the corner for the time being. So as we talked about, there's a single inflation point located just here. Now, basically the air comes in for this point, goes up the beams itself, and then you've got additional kind of uh, insulate sort of taps inside. It distributes the air throughout the actual awning itself. And it means like I said, because you've got a deflation point at the bottom of every single beam, you haven't got to worry about getting the air out as per our kind of our own pitching and packing videos. Now, a decent sort of space, so you've got sort of, uh, so it's 260 in terms of its width and then about 240 in the main body. You've then got additional sort of 80, no, 90 centimetres, sorry, in that tunnel section. So your overall length is looking around about sort of 330. So it's not a deepest thing on the market, but it's big enough. And you can see how from say like the interior height in here is absolutely class. You know, I'm about six foot two, I'm nowhere near that. And we've even got a little roof liner in place as well in the corners. I can quite happily do so. It means that when we're coming in the front door and in the back door as well, or the other way around I should say, um, I haven't got a stoop to get in and out. And that's where I say personally, because of the kind of very boxy kind of frame of it, it feels very generous in terms of its size, even though it's not actually massively big on the floor. And what benefits having things like tables and chairs in here, you can push a thing right close up to the edges to maximize your internal space. A ground sheet's not supplied with it. Uh, you can buy additional sort of breathable floorings uh, as well as footprints as well if you really want to. So you can kind of get a bit more sealed. It's coming more for that kind of driveway purpose and like I said, more caravan based style where 
the breathability and the floor of the campsites, we want to stay there for a bit longer. In theory, to be fair, the side panels are the same as the caravan versions. There's no reason why you couldn't put an annex on either side if you really, really wanted to. Um, it means that suddenly you've got a living central area, then sleeping pods off the bed. So if you're not actually sleeping in the van itself, it's a good way of actually accommodating people. Because you've got all the design and all the spec and all the features built into it, it initially is not essentially, it's quite pricey, you know. Looking around about a thousand prime price points sort of working its way up, um, and there are some things that things that, you know, like roof linings and the mesh panels and things like that, you can still add on it. You do get in a really nice strong downdraft pump, so it's like a higher pressure pump to make it sort of easier to pitch it. Um, and like I said, what you can also do is buy additional, uh, well, you don't need any additional thrower straps, but I would still recommend the sticks and keep you looking to connect to your van. There are three straps applied with it that you can take over the top. So it means you haven't always have to have a sort of C rail or wind out to go into, but traditionally you will need a fixing kit to work it like so. The back section, as we said here, this door again, like the front can roll from right to left or left to right, or as I'm going to do now, completely kind of <laughs> remove it down, unpeg it and kind of have it almost out of the way. So you can, again, you can kind of see how it's nice and neat and it sort of creates that kind of gazebo kind of feeling if you wanted to. And in many ways, because you can have sort of mesh, mesh, mesh window, mesh front panel, it's more a shelter gazebo. That sort of, sort of 80, 90 centimeters in the tunnel section is just enough to either have the door halfway and use that as a bit of a storage area. And again, because you've got a door at the front and the back, it doesn't matter which way, like I said, you're facing this on the van. Plus it means that if the weather changes, you always haven't got to have come through the same way the driving rain's coming through. You can come out the back quite nice and neatly. There's different attachments um, in terms of, like I said, you can use a pull and clamp system. Uh, you've got the storm straps, but also you've got internal straps as well to take up the bracing. So not only can you adjust the height to get that nice fold in the top, but you can brace it sort of from front to back and keep it quite nicely and neatly as well. Let's pick up the camera now, a little bit of a look through. In fact, let's put that panel back in, just so you can see kind of the little storage section that you would have in that. All fingers and thumbs, come on, Mike. Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking. Right. So, as you can see, we're completely opened. It almost lends itself to like, yeah, it does feel kind of homely esque. You've got kind of almost traditional style caravan curtains, uh, even things, you know, so you can slide those across. And again, you've got two zip parts on every panel, so you can also create that little rand on the sides as well as the front. A solid door there, and then there's also a mesh door sort of in what's in front of it, so you can kind of get that kind of scenario. And again, you've got a mesh part on the actual uh, window to get that airflow running throughout it. I put the roof line in place that actually gives that kind of more homely look. When you sort of come above it, you can see there you've got your little tap points going through there. There's also additional kind of uh, Velcro tabs here, so you can actually put some internal lighting in and run it off sort of uh, two, well, one socket will run off up to three lights. So in theory, you can have one in sort of the two kind of uh, corner pieces and one right up in the apex. There's also a sky window located there as well. Um, so what you can do is by taking down the toggle points, you can now a little bit of light in, just, and obviously that will just then roll back and toggles back like so, the time being rolled back like so. And again, that ventilation point in the top corner is always gonna be open, so that's gonna help with circulation of air. Also, one thing you've also got, uh, again, Velcro points there, so you can actually have a light, again, hanging directly in the ceiling, flooding light directly down. Tunnel section, like I said, immediately it's the, the larger version, so it might be a little bit baggier than it should be, but it kind of gives you a bit more of an idea. Like I said, you've got a back door there and that sort of storage area, so when you kind of slide your sort of door back, it kind of creates that little storage section where you can put even put like a portable toilet in there or whatever you want to really, really make it. As we come kind of out the sort of side door, again, it kind of opens itself up a bit more and you can see difference in terms of the roof height. You know, it's not really a huge lot of difference, but because you've got a higher main body slightly, it gives you the benefit that you have a higher point for the tunnel section. So it means you're less likely to scrape the door as it kind of comes back. But I think in terms of the way it looks, it's a really nice bit of kit, really nice and flexible. 
It's certainly one we'll look to have up in our uh, indoor display showroom. So you can always come and sort of see how it's sort of going from there. But yeah, I think it's going to be a very popular model. Something a little bit different. And I said, it's almost like the uh, second generation in many ways, with the first kind of being a uh, Rally Driveway 260. So for me, it's definitely more orientated for someone who wants living area rather than sleeping area. Although you can, like I said earlier, buy sleeping compartments for it. But if you want more information about this product at any point, um, feel free to uh, sort of check the link below. It'll take you straight through to our website. We've got all the low prices, floor plans, uh, weights, uh, pack weights, minimum weights, and all these sort of things going on. So you can, yeah, again, sort of just tap into those details a little bit finer if you really want to. But overall, I think a really nice model, something a bit different and a bit more refreshing. Um, and it works for me in slightly a better way than probably Dometic slash Camper have done in the past. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our little video review on the new Dometic Club Driveway 261 or DTK as it might also be known.